Guys, Dark vs. Solar, Triton is our first map. A ZBZ between two Koreans that are just godlike at this matchup. Alright, we're going to be launching in onto Triton up here in the top left-hand side of the map. Representing Triumphant Song Gaming, he is Solar. And in the bottom right from Dragon Phoenix Gaming, you know him, you love him. He's the world champion, Dark. One so of the most brutal players, really, Dark, at, at taking advantage of his opponents and capitalizing upon weakness. Uh, we saw him really pick Raynor apart in the finals of BlizzCon. Uh, we saw Mutalisk positions where it looked like Raynor was always about to stabilize and Dark would dive in. There were moments where Vipers would pop out and Mutalisks were on top of them before they could even get energy. There were Banelings finding the worker lines and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, we saw massive flexibility in that series, but we also saw a player who sensed a moment of weakness and he just grabbed hold of that and never let go of that series from that moment onwards. And that really is dark as a player. Solar, I think he's definitely someone who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe strategy wise, build order wise with dark. Mechanically, definitely rather evenly matched. It's just a matter of can Solar actually maintain that consistency throughout the series? I think if he gives dark a bit of an opening here, dark can build up momentum and run away with it very fast. I completely agree with you. It's a very Korean player thing, but certainly like exacerbated for Dark, where you know you're kind of a shark basically. You smell blood, you go in as that moment of weakness, and you finish oh, them yeah. off. It's and, uh, it's a great way to play as well. I mean, it's so good in these big tournament settings. Every player gets a little bit of nerves at least, right? Absolutely. So Solar on camera actually uh, having a sip of water during the early stages of the game, where he doesn't really need to do too much. It is just a regular, fast expansion into gas pool from both players. Korean Zergs sometimes like to get a pretty quick third, about two and a half minutes, and then the bailing in the natural, bailing nest in the natural for just playing the most stock standard ZBZ opener. That's, yeah. uh, it actually looks like both players is kind of opening that, uh, you know, what I like to call like the gentleman agreement ZBZ opener. Yeah, Ling Speed starting up for both of them. Neither pulling off gas just yet. So that does tell us it's quite a standard opening. Now, Ling Bane, of course, very good here. Large map, many paths across, many backstab paths, attack paths. Mobility is going to be key, and that is why Ling Speed, Banelings, of course, to complement that and counter the Zerglings is going to be super crucial. Uh, we talk about it a lot. Muta's big in the meta, but they're especially powerful on these large maps. Uh, because of that, we also see players, if they get a whiff of that, sometimes go for a very quick Nidus Worm Roach Queen attack. So I would not be surprised, at least a few of the games in this series, to see one player throwing Roaches, Queens out of Nidus Worms, and the other player just trying to survive and get their Mutalist count up. If you had to pick which one of these players was more of a Roach Boy, who would you pick? I feel like Solar is more of a Roach Boy. Yeah, Dark's, absolutely. Dark's more of a Ling Bane Muta Boy. I think Dark's capable of playing both styles, well, but stylistically, yeah. It, yeah, it's like you're probably going to see that matchup. Uh, of course, already a couple of Zerglings starting up for both sides, but only a small amount. And this is cool. You know, it used to be much more just big waves of Ling Bane crashing into each other in this matchup. Uh, I do really credit Serral, maybe not with creating, but with popularizing the very defensive, fast evolution chamber. And we see that out of Solar now. No Evo chamber down for Dark just yet. Neither player started their lair. We're going to find out their tech paths and choices in the near future. Dark trying to get some forward Banelings morph, but they do get caught. Certainly do. Good map awareness here from Solar as he takes these Lings for a bit of a walk across the map. Got plus one attack on the Evo chamber here, but a ranged attack. So it looks like Solar... Trying to go into Roaches here to follow things up as a bit of an upgrade timing. Yeah, and there are some really nasty timing attacks with that fast plus one where you just go Roach, Zergling, Baneling, a few Ravages, and it just kind of, it makes it look so much more like an economic build because they see that evolution chamber wobbling and they know that you're not teching up. Meanwhile, Solar gets in, sees the lair started. Of course, it technically could be a fake, but that tells him that Dark is working his way up that tech tree. And there is that Evo Chamber, finally from Dark. Got to work on those upgrades and sort of basically show us, based on what we see on that Evo Chamber, and any if he drops, it, uh, drops any more tech structures here with him, Lair is done, what his path is going to be, what his plan is going to be, what his composition is going to look like in a couple minutes here. He is taking these extra gases, and that natural. Nice scout there by Dark. Seeing those gases does tell you that Sol is going up the tech tree as well. Both players out with... Uh, kind of medium number of Zerglings and Banelings. I actually wouldn't mind them pressuring, but you can see they're both so respectful of the chance of Zerglings being out of the map, of a Baneling backstab coming in. They are sitting defensively for now, focusing on trying to deny that scouting, uh, working their way up. 
Now Dark is going, he's getting a Roach Warren, but he's also getting plus one melee here. It's a little bit different from Solo, who's investing a little bit more heavily into the Roach and Ravages themselves. And that means, often when you see plus one melee, that Aspire is next on the menu, and that is indeed what's coming out of Dark. Going for a little bit of a bamboozle here against Solar. This is fascinating because that's a pretty late spire. When you're when you're kind of delaying your upgrade this much, you're not building any roaches. This is a massive uh, gamble, I would say, from Dark in that he's going huge economy, like so far up, and he's got nothing to defend except a pack of Ling Bane. If there was a sharp roach attack, if there was one of those Roach Queen Nidus Worms, it would have a huge window to get in here before Dark has anything on the ground to fight it. Well, the Overseer is coming through the main base first, and it is going to be a little bit difficult to get rid of that Overseer with just the Queens, even though it doesn't have speed. And the Overseer is actually not parking through that natural, it doesn't want to lose it, flying to the north side here of that main base. Pretty important, for obviously, for Solar to get the information of that Spire, because the Muters can just surprise you and kill you, even at this level of StarCraft 2. I think at this point, really, you should be having some inkling that something is not quite yeah. right here. Not seen any roaches, he's not seen, uh, you know, he sees a lot of Lings as well. Yeah, lots of Ling Bane out front, and that's not normal. The Spy is now finishing up. We're going to see about 10 Mutalisks starting up immediately for Dark. And uh, Hydroden does go down now for Solar, who's paused his upgrades for quite a while. He's got two Evolution Chambers, but he's forgot his plus two range attack. I think Solar really needs to get it, uh, get it moving on these upgrades, he needs to get creep out towards this fourth base. And we are going to see Muta Zergling Baneling, a fast, hard-hitting mobile composition. But it doesn't have a lot of hit points. It's very fragile. It can't stand its ground in a pitched battle. So Dark's going to be looking to harass, run in from multiple angles. Meanwhile, Solar, uh, he's just got to lock things down defensively. He's got to hang on. Yeah, it looks like Solar's just going to chill at home for a bit here because it, as Ozzy drops all that tech, he's getting Hydras with Groove Spines. It's very defensive. He's getting an Infestation Pit as well to be able to deal with the Muters just in case they get out of hand. Lots of ways to deal with them in the Infestation Pit. But uh, we get that too much as we see the Muters flocking through the middle here, getting that Overseer. The Ling's also sort of posturing on the outside of that fourth base of Solar, potentially for a run by. Massive economy style here for Dark, already moving out to take a fifth base and up at 78 work as the Muta count continuing to grow, plus two melee getting started without delay. A very important upgrade, it allows your Banelings to one-shot enemy workers. So once that kicks in, Dark's run by is going to get even more dangerous. Mm. The Muta is still veering around. For now though, Solar, he's working his way up that tech tree. Will we see Lurkers? Will we see Vipers? Just Roach Hydra alone is not that great and Solar has not been upgrading. And yet he's droning. I'm a little bit confused where Sol is going with his tech path. Has he just forgotten about the upgrades? Oh, I think you might be right, Pig. Plus two is so incredibly important. There can't really be a reason not to get it. He is spending some of his gas here on Infestors and whatnot, but still has a bit of a gas bank. So certainly after a bit of a you know a round of minerals, he can't afford plus two. Infestors, absolutely pretty important here. They're one of the ways of dealing with Mutalists with Infestation Pit. We also have Hydras here. And you were talking about plus two being fantastic at one-shotting workers. Plus two on those Bane Lings also helps you a ton against a big ball of Hydras when you're the Mutaling Bane player. And the Hydras are one of the threats to your army. Indeed. We are seeing a Hive now starting up for Solar. Still no Carapace upgrades to diminish the Zergling attack. Still no ranged attack upgrades on the way. A big misstep here from Solar. But other than that, his tech is well set up. His defense is there. Banelings coming in on the top side and the left side at the same time. Both mineral lines getting hit. A quick pull and the drones are defended. Roaches in position on the left and the right. Great defense by Solar so far. And he's sending in more Banelings. The Muta's coming along for the assist this time. So going to pick off a few of these units. The drones do get pulled one more time. Four drones go down, but that was pretty expensive for Dark to use a lot of Banelings there. I wouldn't mind more Spore Crawlers coming down right oh. now here for Solar. He's got to worry about these Muters opening up avenues for the Banelings to hit the Mineral Lines. It is non-stop aggression from the world champion. Dark here on five bases. His Infestation Pet's down. He's heading towards Hive Tech behind this. He's got to get in there and do more damage. Solar's army is higher tech than his, and it will counter him in the long run. Certainly will. Lurk is extremely scary. Nice fungal there on the Banelings. Splits his units pretty well, but these Banelings find an opening. Eight drones going Ooh. down to the fourth base. Muters on the right side, fighting a cluster of Hydras undefended. Picking off the Queens as well. Action all over the place. 14 drones at the end going down. Knocking Solar down to 54 workers against the monstrous 77 drone economy of Dark. He needs more Spore Crawlers. There's a reason I was pointing that out. That Muter count is so scary. If you don't have those Spore Crawlers, the Muters are going to find openings. And uh, right now, one Viper on the way. Still no upgrades, no Carapace or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, if Solar can stabilize and hang on, he's still got a good work account. He's still got the better army in the long term, but he's got to defend that economy. 
Bailing's rolling in again. Lurkers and Roaches ready for them, though. They might get a couple workers. Yes, they do. They actually get seven. It's more than I thought, honestly. I thought maybe three or four. Muta's in the main base as well. Solar only with one spore crawler up here. That's the hive as well. Very, very important. Viper's another thing that you want from that hive to be able to deal with Mutalisks. Oh man, I mean, Solar's got a big ground army right now. He's building tons of Hydras. I think he's going to have to go and do a counter push with this. Uh, the fact that he's committing all to units, he's not rebuilding spores. He's oh, not hatchery. rebuilding his work account either. This tells me Solar just wants to have a mobile army and he's going to try and counter push across this map, I believe. I mean, he does. You're absolutely right, Pig. He has Hive. He's getting that uh, Lurker range upgrade, and that means that these Lurkers with the Roaches and Hydras are just going to be the better army. Dark's going to make sure, though, that if that happens, Solar's not going to have a home to go back to as he keeps hitting that economy pretty hard. These hatcheries are also super, super low and super, super damaged. This is a wild and action-packed CBZ game one. That's for damn sure. Ooh. Oh, he snipes the only Lurker on this side. Tons of Banelings are coming in behind it, and he's going to hit the left-hand side at the same time. He also picked up the Lurker over here. Don't forget, with the Mulus earlier, hatch Hatchery quite low, Banelings looking for the drones. Banelings running in from both sides, the hatchery goes down on the fourth base. Banelings veering in towards the third. They are going to find the drones and another 11 Ooh. workers go down. Solar, he's going to have to pull the trigger soon. He's rebuilding workers. I feel like he has to go all in. He's giving too much time for Dark right now. His economy getting boozed and bratted and he's just not replacing the spore crawlers. Hydras are not going to cut it here. You need to actually go across the map if you're committing this much to army and so little to static defense and economy. And Dark is getting the response here. We brought out <laughs> since that famous Reyna Serral game. We know that this tech actually can get the job done. Ultralisks have been made here, or rather on the way here for Dark as he starts Kitness planning the second the cavern finishes. Can we take a glance at the wall of Dark quickly uh, on his natural? Just for a moment, yeah, Ultras, I think, won't fit out of that wall. So we'll take a look back at this later when Ultras are coming out. But for now, Banelings coming in on this base. The Lurker doing what it can, but Banelings still find the hatchery mm. and connect. Eight workers falling as well. Dark is throwing a lot of units away here, Pig. He's obviously been maxed. He needs to throw away a bit of supply to be able to get the big heavy hitting units. You know, those Ultras are in production now. Dark remaxing again. I am still a little bit worried. I know it's weird to say that he's worried because he seems so far ahead, but I'm a little worried worried for Dark if Solar's army does go across the map. Yeah, of course, we'll see if the Ultras can squeeze out of that wall or not. That was one of the big mistakes that Serral made against Raynor in that uh, semi-final at BlizzCon. There's uh, five Ultralisks trapped behind his wall for most of the game, uh, part of why he wasn't able to take good fights. The Muta's coming in, they find the Lurker again. This is just too expensive. Uh, this, this defense for Solar is not quite right. But the thing is, you know what? He has a massive 143 supply army. Unfortunately, only one upgrade, just plus one range, nothing else. Ooh, parasitic bombs land on the muters, but a quick split there. It's not in the middle of the fight. And oh. the circlings! Oh no! Plus two circlings just flooding into that natural affair, but Solar doesn't have time to deal with it. He's got an attack to win. He comes forward there. One of the ultras goes down. Big fungals on the front line there of Dark's defensive forces as Solar continues to barrel through. Dark bringing back what he has to try and assist in the air. All right, I mean, this is crazy. This is a bit of a base race right now. Zerglings so good at taking out buildings. Solar leaving his front door open. He's going to try and push through into the heart oh. of Dark's production. Big, big Viper pickoffs there. Of course, there's some high energy Vipers, full energy Vipers, in fact, on the front line here for Solar. In comes those Mulas. Stark's army is very light. It's very, very easy to die very quickly here to the heavy hitting army of Solar with the Lurkers, the Roaches, and the Hydras. But with these Ultras, if he gets enough of them up, he can take a fight for sure, especially with these upgrades and kindness. He's got nothing left at home. It's just this army. Solar has to win with that one army on the front. He's going over to the fifth base as well, trying to wipe out that one. But at home, he is at risk of elimination, and it is a paltry force, Maynard. That's about 12 Roaches, a few Hydras. Not going to cut it. And Dark just overwhelms, overruns Solar's defenses. A really exciting playstyle style from Dark. I mean, obviously, Ling Bane Muter in every matchup is pretty hectic. It's very fast, it's furious. It's sort of that backstabby rogue character where, you know, you know you're a bit of a high dexterity character. That's kind of what that unit comp is like there for Dark, doing so much damage to the more warrior-based tanky army of Solar, which looked scary, and I honestly was worried for Dark, and it started to look all right for Solar at the start. He picked off an Ultra, he got some nice fungals in that front line. Dark's army does disappear pretty quick, apart from the Ultras, but the base race, just that constant damage. Solar felt like he was pressed up against the cage, and he just wouldn't let the pressure off. Yeah, when you're in that position, I think a lot of StarCraft players' instincts kick in and say, I've got to try to get back out on the map. I've got to try to not sit too defensively. 
But it's actually the opposite. For Solar there, he needed to build more static defense. We needed Spore Crawlers. I wouldn't have minded Evo Chambers walling off the very edges of his third and fourth base so Banelings couldn't run around the back. We kept seeing Banelings run around the back line of his fourth. He should have had an Evo Evolution team blocking that and more Spore Crawlers to guard the Lurkers because the moment your Lurkers start getting sniped by Muters, it spirals very quickly out of control. I think some very nice beginnings to the defense for Solar. We saw that great fungal trap about 15 Banelings. Really good positioning, but there was just too many openings in the follow-up. He needed to double down on the turtle, just get up the Spore Crawlers, really spread his units well and keep rebuilding that drone count. I think if he's able to do that in a similar situation in the future games, he should be able to hang on. Indeed. We don't see too much of this map here on the broadcast, but we are going to go into Zen, the game number two between Dark and Solar. And our first player is going to be in the bottom left here for Triumphant Song Gaining, the Red Zerg. He is Solar. And up here in the top right hand side, representing Dragon Phoenix Gaming, last year's world champion, he is Dark. I love seeing the stats at the bottom there. Obviously, with these players getting deeper and deeper into the first big offline tournament of the ESL Pro Tour for StarCraft 2, the points are getting amassed. And I would love to see where they are at the uh, at the end of tomorrow, which is the final day of the broadcast. Indeed. It is, of course, Zen now, the shortest rush distance in the pool. But that is through a very thin path through the middle of the map, multiple thin paths. And one at the front of the natural, which is very easily walled off as well, uh, once the creep spread gets out there. So, actually first for both players to start things off. And uh, a map with very kind of spread out bases, these weird winding paths around the map. I can't say I've seen a lot of Zerg versus Zerg on this map, and that which I have seen, definitely no late game. We haven't, I haven't really seen, even as late as what we saw in the last map, I've seen some aggressive pushes, some Ling Bane charges, some Roach Bane attacks, not much else than that. Yeah, uh, unfortunately I don't see it a whole lot either. <laughs> I mainly cast uh, Pro Tour and Alima League, and this map is not really in the Alima League. It's vetoed quite a bit in the Pro Tour, so you don't see it a ton. Yeah, it has been the number one vetoed map. Been enjoying players like uh, SOS and Patience and the kind of crazy Wilder players letting it in a little bit more into those series does create some very interesting games as, uh, you know, these, these paths across the map create all sorts of different advantageous choke points, areas to engage. And for now, both players starting up those queens. I think uh, definitely where you're going to take your fourth and fifth is a big choice on this map. You can expand, of course, down the edges of the map, but it's going to be more likely to go kind of down to the left here and then up above that, uh, which there is a base just tucked right below your main. Very far to get there by ground, but also very, very hard for your opponent to assault. You're not wrong. We're going to see those third bases taken from both players, two and a half minutes. And once again, just the exact same opening as the first game. We really don't know what path they're going to go down with this build order until we see Evo Chamber timings, Lair timings, Gas timings, that sort of thing. At the moment, very stock standard. Yeah, hitting the drones really hard. I think for Solar right now, the battle is to just kind of hang on, keep your mentality smooth and calm. Follow your build orders uh, and just kind of stick with it. Don't get thrown off by that rough game one. And it does spot the Baneling Nest, of course, walling off the front for both players. Very typical here on Zen. Indeed. I wonder, this map actually does seem like one of those maps that is quite a bit better for that style that Dark played on Triton. You know, the, well, I mean, you can't really Baneling run by into the natural as well, but the third and fourth are certainly hard to, uh, are certainly easy to get, to get exposed because you can't wall off ramps anymore as you get further and further out on that map. And the middle of the map can be such a, uh, a DMZ for Roach Battles because of those little choke points between the minerals and the, uh, and the high ground brush. Yeah, it gets very, very weird pushing back and forth with Roach Ravager. Corrosive Biles landing everywhere. And once again, quicker evolution chamber here for Solar. So definitely going to be gearing up to go up those upgrades. Plus one range immediately. Mm. Same matchup of, uh, of opening there. No yeah, almost, the almost the exact same build from Solar so far. Yeah, if we see a lair start up momentarily, it'll look pretty similar for Dark as well. And it does. All right, we may see a, a complete repeat, and that'd be really cool because I'd love to see those adjustments. You know, I, I think the Lingbane Muta style, when it works perfectly the way it's meant to, like in that last game, 
it almost looks like an easy way to win. If you get up to like 70, 80 workers and you just get to roll banelings in from two sides, the Muters bounce around. Don't get me wrong, maybe for, you know, average Joe Ladder player at home, it's not easy. But for a player of Dark's caliber, there's nothing pressuring you on your side of the map. Your macro is easy as pie. And you, you get to choose where the fights happen, when the fights happen. Your muters distract in one area, the banelings roll in another. Your banelings roll into one base, your lings run into another base. It really is just constant one-two punches, sometimes attacking three places at once. So I, I want to see how Solar adapts and blocks that. And I definitely think, uh, in this case, there is one way to do that, Maynard, and it's don't let it get that far. That's right. Just send a dozen roaches down the throat of your enemy and kill them, seems to be the idea here from Solar. We've seen it work before, and this time as Dark isn't shooting up the tech tree and trying to fake a roach warren. This is a real one. He's getting roaches, getting plus one attack as well. We're going to Ling Bane scuffle here at the front with Solar and Dark trying to trade as well as possible. So with a few more lings left over, still kind of pressuring on the outside with the Overlord of Dark seeing it all. Yeah, the roaches are being seen at this point, so no more drones will be coming down for Dark. He's got to react with tons of roaches. He doesn't have a lot of supply for you right now. Uh, Dark, He's drone too much. He really needs to respect this. He does not have a lot of units out. That's a big attack. It's going to be a very close fight. That's a ton of banelings, Maynard. Certainly is. He's got some queens on that front line. They can tank those banes pretty nicely, but those are a lot of roaches with that attack upgrade. It comes Dark's army. It comes Solar's army. The banelings getting picked up very very nicely though, for the Banelings to the south, looking for that cluster of drones. Banelings are going to find the workers there. And more Zerglings rallying in behind this, of course. More and more Roaches coming in, not looking to give Dark any time. You can also see those Ravager Morphs healing those uh, those Roaches back to full hit points, getting on top of this defense just before it can get together. 13 Roaches are about to pop out. Gee, oh, gee. Get there in time. What a timing from Sola, sneaking a map off of Dark there. Like I said, this kid is a monster in this matchup. And it is such a tough build to deal with, especially when you don't, don't see it. Yeah, he droned a little bit too heavily there, that round of yeah. six or seven drones. If that was Roaches, you had time to get a couple Ravages up as well. Maybe we're still casting that game and it's a bit more of a tug of war. But that was just Solar steamrolling with a great attack timing. I, I love that attack so much, specifically because of what you said there. It's so hard to scout. I mean, obviously, I would, I would always argue hitting off 30 drones with just Roach Ravager Baneling. Who needs a plus one upgrade? It's not that important. The whole point is to sell the story. You progress higher in drones to a point where it is so difficult for your opponent to actually scout. Hey, wait a second. Oh, you don't actually have a lair behind this? You can't get into the main base to check that. But you see lots of drones on the natural. You see extra gases. You see an evolution chamber wobbling, which normally means they're going to a longer game. And you feel like you've got all the information you need to go up to 60 plus workers. It's such a surprising attack. And that's why I love its place in the meta. I think that was the perfect time for Solar to pull it out. And he even started the attack before that upgrade finished. In fact, the game might have ended before that upgrade finished. We didn't really get to see in the end there. But certainly at the beginning of the attack, I was looking at that upgrades tab. I was like, where's that plus? Plus one, nothing. He's just coming in there with fresh 0-0 zero, zero, Roach, Ling, Ravager. And he sealed that deal. So one apiece here. We got ourselves a series. Not going to be another 3-0 here between Dark and Solar. Which puts a big grin on my StarCraft fan face. Let's get into it, guys. Game number three. All right. The next map is going to be Nightshade and tied up 1-1. One, one. It is, of course, going to be a moment where one player takes a decisive lead. It is the first of three maps to win this series. And down here in the bottom right-hand side, representing Triumphant Song Gaming, he is Solar. And the top left, still the champ from Dragon Phoenix Gaming. He is Dark. So with the new uh, ESL Pro Tour, Dark's going to probably be the longest reigning world champion in StarCraft 2. <laughs> well, actually, definitely. Yeah. It's not, uh, not going to be BlizzCon that decides the world champ anymore. It's going to be this very event this time next year. The Intel Extreme Masters in Katowice is where it's all going to go down. So he'll be the world champ for an extra three or four months. And that's such exciting news. This tournament here, such a long format. It's stretched out for such an amount of time that uh, it gives the players so many chances to really prove their mettle. Even though he had an unfortunate performance in the last match, I think Hurricane's story making it this far, a testament to that. So close to elimination in the open qualifiers, in the group stage multiple times, and he clawed his way through to the top 12. And these are the sort of things where, you know, you only get a chance to make those sort of comebacks here at Katowice when we have six, seven days of non-stop StarCraft games, where we have round-robin formats, where we have you playing not just one or two opponents and getting eliminated from a bad draw, but really getting a chance to prove your mettle. 
and my, and meanwhile, while you're doing that, accumulating points for the league as well. A lot of events coming up this year, of course, awarding points globally and locally. Good stuff. Very excited for the rest of 2020. And this event's been a pretty great way to state it. It's for damn sure. All right, we're going into Nightshade. So this is a map with both one of the shortest rush distances in the pool, but also, more importantly, a very spread out uh, area to the third. So if we pan down, actually, we could take a look and just see how big and wide open this whole area is. And that third base very spread apart. Because of this, there's multiple attack avenues. There's a lot of areas where Zerglings can run past your Banelings, where enemy Banelings can sneak in from a surprising angle into your mineral line. And that is why this is a map we've somewhat consistently seen Zerg players be a bit more aggressive on. Much more likely to see someone like Dark just kind of hold down the Zergling key, build 15 or 20 Zerglings, and just put a bunch of pressure on the opponent from the start of the game. Yeah, I mean, Zerg always is going to be enjoying all that free space to work with, those run-by potentials, those surrounds. It's kind of where Zerg flourishes. And it has, of course, been the more uh, aggressive maps two in a row, Zen, then Nightshade. So if it does go go later, no doubt we've got those maps like uh, Eternal Empire and that sort of stuff coming in a bit later where we are more likely to see more of that map one sort of dynamic. But for now, both players continuing to drone up minimal number of Zerglings on both sides. Yes, yeah, so no big no big early Ling Bane attack from either player here, just for safety. That's what these Lings have been made for. Quick third Queen on either side as well. No doubt they'll be connecting the creep to the third base uh, and just using a few defensive Banelings to stay safe. Solar's going to be the first one to build a few more Zerglings, but just eight. Uh, at most, a poking and prodding force. And really, both players just very comfortable to push that economy dark. Holding down the drone button like oh, yeah. crazy. I was going to say, these eight, eight Lings doesn't seem like much. Like Pick mentioned, it's a poke. It's not really an army that you can do a whole lot with in this, uh, in this game. But Dark is taking a nice drone lead as a result. All of his lava has been going into drones except for these first four Lings. Zergling does get in here for Solar. Does a little bit of a rotation and says, oh my, you've got a lot of workers and not much else. Evolution Chamber, of course, has now gone down at the front here for Dark. And uh, plus... Things are freaking out, man. Just having a party, man. So that's the Zerg treadmill part of the base. Did they... They killed a creep man. Ah. Might have been blocking the uh, ideal wall off or something like that. Yeah, potentially. And both players getting plus one at around the same time here. Plus one ranged, of course, is what we're talking about. And Solar has the earlier Roach Warren Dark with the quicker Lair, though. Very similar builds from both players. But the yeah. Lair, of course, uh, a fair big difference. And Solar squeezing out that extra big round of drones to try and catch up with Dark or even overtake Dark's drone count. Yeah, both very economic. I, I expect to see a Lair start up in a second as 100 gas just got hit there. Uh, Solar, of course, a little bit slower on the initial gas mining, now starts the lair up. So faster roach speed will go to Dark, faster upgrades to Solar, who is going to want to start plus two range the moment that plus one finishes. We do not want to see forgotten upgrades like in map number one. Um, of course, I mean, you could argue that it's not too important to start those, and it's more important to get tech units to defend, say, Muta Zergling. But uh, as he continues in this game, I think he's going to get more and more information that points towards, hey, wait a second, Kind of late gases on the natural, Roach Horn and Devo Chamber wobbling. This all points towards Roach first Roach on this map. Solar's droning like crazy over here. He's been, he's been, I think he has one of those drinking birds hitting the D key on his keyboard. <laughs> it, it is uh, so much economic focus actually from both players, but with Solar, of course, that little bit of an edge. And now he's getting Overlord speed as well, so just playing ultra safe. Really just sort of sitting back and waiting to see what Dark shows is his hand. And Dark queues up another nine workers as well. So uh, both players here very happy to just embrace the economic side of Zerg versus Zerg. Greed a is second good. evolution chamber for both of them. And that, of course, does gear you up for a big 2-1, uh, you know, plus two range, plus one carapace, potential timing attack. Fourth base on the way for both players as well. It's going to be a big Roach versus Roach battle. Now, this is going to center around, of course, Roaches and Ravages trying to take better fights. But there's also a lot of backstabs, splitting workers off. One of the best trades you can get in terms of damage output for the amount of, uh, of, of value you get is always going for workers. Workers, the most fragile 
uh, and expensive piece of any person's uh, setup on their side of the map. So just even three or four roaches running into a mineral line, a few zerglings running into a mineral line, even though the big fight looks like it's the focus, it's often these small little backstabs that actually build the advantages. So I saw this going to go for an Overlord drop with Banelings here. His Overlord hasn't been turned into a Dropper Lord just yet, but it is in position. It's looking suspiciously like that is the play here. And both players have uh, managed to get their drone counts back up to around 70, and now they've been begging big swells of units. Roaches and Ravages here for Dark, patrolling the outskirts of his infrastructure. Solar, same deal, morphing some of those Ravages at that fourth base. And there is that Dropper Lord on the way here to grab that drone line and get rid of the Baneling Nest. Just wants to open up the ability to move around his bases, which is kind of cute. Bailing drop is coming in here. Dark, he's had vision of it, but I don't know if he's noticed it. Right now, it looks like he's distracted in the middle of the map. Oh. The Bailing's going to come in in a big way. Oh. Big moves there from Solar. Four Bailing's very inexpensive compared to 11 drones. Great edge there for Solar. Great damage for the Red Zerg in the bottom right. And he is just using an extra bit of supply to squeeze out a lot more roaches. Dark is further along in that plus two attack upgrade, and he might try and even the field, but it is so hard to attack in a Solar here. Those Zerglings on the top side as well, just biding their time, waiting until there's an opening. It's just one more thing Dark has to worry about in this game. Likewise, that drop a lot on the left side. I'd love to see more Roach drops or Baneling drops queued up there. And we'll have to keep our eyes on it. Looks like Dark's going to move across this map. His plus two, plus one carapace, both a bit faster. He's going to choose to take the timing attack. He is ahead on those upgrades. They're going to kick in in just a moment. Yeah, this is really, really important here. Carapace in a couple seconds, plus to attack a little bit further along. He's actually getting a lot of pain off of this building right here. That's getting quite low, Pig. Dropping some vials as well to soon back Solar's army, and that hatchery is killed. Nice move from Dark. He does end up evening it up. Yeah, taking advantage of that beautiful upgrade window where he was ahead there. The Roaches and Ravages of Solar are going to jump forward. They should be able to take a fight here. Yeah, the files need to be respected. Looks like one Ravager may be getting caught in the end there. Dark is up, mining a base. He's down a bit in workers, but up a base. Oh, Dark's Ravager on the right side. A couple of them go down to the Roach numbers here of Solar. Both oh. players are about to have equal upgrades, but at the moment, Dark still with an upgrade lead. Yeah, looking for the sandwich there is Dark. Solar not wanting to get caught out there. The Banelings are going to try and find the worker line, but only one Baneling survives. Not enough to take out the drones. And there we go. We see Dark with a very slight army advantage right now. Of course, still only on 61 workers. Hasn't rebuilt any of them. Doesn't feel any need to. Remember, he took out Solar's fourth base. So yeah. even though Solar's got more workers, he's only mining a little bit more money at the moment. And with both players maxed out, that means that Dark has the bigger army. So similar upgrades, but a lot more Roaches and Ravages here for Dark. He is still poking on the outside. Looks like a few Biles going down the Overlords of Solar as well. Oh. He's trying to push this fight into it. He's trying to make Solar commit into an engagement with him having that concave advantage, but Solar won't give him that, that engagement that he wants. Yeah, and a lot of Dark's army is very bruised right now. He can't afford to take even one more big wave of Biles. He does have a better concave there. At the same time, a lovely little Baneling drop is going to come into that natural, but not being micro too well, only going to take out three workers. Dark just pressing the multitasking. Solar, Solar struggling under pressure. Yeah, Dark's still got a pretty big army here, but a lot of it's in production. It's not here right now. 22 roaches in those lavas about to hatch to be on that front line. I like this from Dark, though. Switching gears and dropping a spire behind all of this, but Solo already seems to be ahead of that. He's got a Hydrodin on the way and a Hive, both of which, when utilized, really shut down the spire. Yeah, right now the, there's no real bank for either player. So it's very scary to swap into anything else. Oh, Once the get the money. exactly the same. It's, like it's a couple hundred. Oh my the numbers, lord. The numbers there, so <laughs> similar. <laughs> that is actually obscene. These players so evenly matched right now. Remember Dark still trailing in the workers and that new fourth base is up and mining on the bottom side of the map. So Solar, he's also going to find room to start. Plus three range, plus two carapace. The Hydra upgrade's on the way. Solar here is banking on the long game. But right now, Dark is the one with the momentum. He's in the driver's seat, and he's the one bullying Solar around this map. Solar has got nothing pressuring Dark. Ooh. One mistake from Solar here, and Dark is going to finish him. Dark consistently keeps finding this concave here. And Solar, even though he's got a great big ball of units that are mostly firing, most of Dark's units are getting better fights. Uh, he eats a couple vials there on that front line, and of course, the longer this game goes, feels like the better it's going to go for Solar because of that tech advantage, because of that drone advantage. He continues to amass a bit more resources here. And I like the tech shift. Lurker Dens, of course, something that Dark really can't deal with without Mutalisks. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, those muters are going to be terrible once plus two, plus three kicks in. Three, two Hydras 
do not care about Mutas, but those upgrades aren't done just yet. There's only three Hydras out, five more on the way. So the Mutas may have a small moment to do some damage here. I feel like it's too late though. Solar really should be able to deal with that just fine. And he's already got a Viper on the way here as well, which not only helps you with the ground battle, but of course when the Mutas hit, one Parasitic Bomb, and that's gonna upset your plans there with those Mutas. You have to split them, you have to respect it. Hydra Den and Infestation Pit on the way here for Dark as well, so we can go to that tier three Lurker tech, but that's a, such a long way off here for the Blue Zerg with Solar ahead in tech and still managing to catch up in army supply as well during all of this. He's trying to push forward his Solar. Wants to get Dark off this map. Those Mutas, of course, starting to clear up the Overlords. That's going to push Solar's vision all the way back. I love the way Dark split the Mutas up all over the place. He's still got the more aggressive mobile army. He doesn't have things like these slow lurkers slowing him down, these Hydras that don't quite have their upgrades. The problem for Dark is he has to find more damage than this. Just treading water in the middle of the map isn't enough. He's got to find position, and I think he has Maynard. Yeah, he's coming around, collapsing onto this fourth hatchery here, forcing Solar into a bit of a choke point. Oh my god, Solar eats so many bars as well. Ooh, that was nasty. Uh, other units on the right-hand side coming as well. The upgrades are there. Plus two carapace is about to kick in. Plus three range not far off as well. Dark once again finding an engagement on even upgrades just before everything turns around and he pulls back at the second. The upgrade advantage goes to Solar. Picks off a hatchery there and then disengages Darks, making sure that Solar's economy takes that hit, keeping as many units alive as possible, just so the threat of a counterattack is not as horrifying for him. Seismic Spines though finishing up, now we've got that range upgrade for the Lurkers for Solar, and the Hive not even done here for Dark, neither is the Lurker Den. So if Solar can squeeze in some Lurkers, which he's doing right now, oh. Dark can potentially find himself taking an atrocious fight. This army for Dark just looks small right now, and it's, it's so low tech, it's nowhere near Solar's level in terms of upgrades. And Solar, he's got Lurkers, Roaches, Ravagers, Hydras, and a Viper. A single Viper as well, they're very useful. The Hamute is trying to come in, but Parasitic Bomb and Hydras have something to say about that. Hey, uh, it's a Parasitic Bomb right there, and those four Mutt Mutts actually look like they're about to pop. We have an engagement here at the front lines. Solar sort of choked in, but he's got that splash damage, he's got those Lurkers as part of the army, breaking off a chunk of his army to the right side to slow down Dark. Meanwhile, he's on that hatchery and it's gonna go down. Yeah, lots of workers falling. The fourth base falls. Dark knocked back down to three base here. Solar, he's almost retaken his fourth behind us at the same time. These Roaches and Ravages desperately fighting for time, trying to pull Solar away, and they are succeeding at that. Dark knows that his win condition right now is getting his own lurkers out at home, and he is desperately scrambling to do it. I think if Solar pushed in then, he won the game. He could have base traded, he could have pushed across, but Dark is just running around circles trying desperately to buy himself another minute in this game. And he's getting adaptive talents. That's the burrow and unburrow speed upgrade for Lurkers, but I don't think he has the ranged upgrade just yet. That feels like it's a lot more important here. Yeah, he doesn't have it. That's that's usually what the Zergs go for immediately there when they get Hive in the Lurker Den. So Solar's going to have that range advantage when the battles kick in, and that's a massive, massive leg up for Solar. Yeah, those Lurkers not having the same range is definitely going to be rough. Can get sieged by the Lurkers of Solar. Solar's got to be careful. Ooh. Lurkers left in the open. I think two of them did just get sniped. At least one did, one survives just barely. And Roach is backstabbing for Dark. Once again, movement nice is the move. key. It's all about mobility. He's had the worst army in a front-on fight the whole time, but he knows that, and so he refuses to fight Solar front-on. Instead, running around in circles, finding the economy, finding the oh. underbelly of Solar. This run by is so incredible for Dark. It's forced Solar to be extremely committed with his next attack. He doesn't have an economy. He doesn't have a home to come home to. The buildings have been mostly destroyed. The drones are mostly dead. Dark's economy, 47 drones, not amazing, but 25 way worse. And that means that Dark also can start to climb a little bit higher in that unit count as he spends that back coming in. Dark's actually trying to squeeze out some drones here, feeling like Solar actually can't commit at the moment but I think Solar absolutely can. It's hard to push Lurker through Lurker though. Oh, big blinding clouds are gonna try and make him do it. The Lurker's moving forward on both oh. sides. This is a crazy engagement. Corrosive piles from Dark though. Slaughter the front line of Solar's Lurkers. They certainly do. The Roaches and Ravages of Solar looking pretty high in number down here in the south. He still has four Lurkers looking to unburrow and reburrow here. Lurker advantage for Dark on that high ground. Trying to keep Solar at bay from getting in on top of the infrastructure. Dark also about to have his own Viper out to assist with the battles for Blinding Clouds and for Yoinks on the Lurkers. Another small run by Abrocious here from Dark just to make sure that Solar is not able to re-expand. You can see the speed of Dark here as a player. It's one of his best attributes, his ability to multitask. It's what almost got him that BlizzCon finalist in 2016. It's what got him at last year. And here again in the chaos of this round of 12, we see Dark. 
He's running these roaches around. He's defending at home. Now, don't get me wrong. He's been knocked back to three base. But the fact that he is making this so scrappy when his army is so much worse on paper than Solar's, it's really incredible play. And if he can actually get out a few Vipers, he might be able to start working his way back into the army game as well. Uh, you're absolutely right. The Vipers are a massive comeback potential here for Dark, even though he is absolutely not as good as far as army com composition is concerned. Solar has the upper leg in that regard. But at the moment, both players have kind of pulled back to their respective sides of the map. We're not seeing any more run buys. We're not seeing any posturing from Solar. Dark trading quite a bit worse than Solar as the game starts to get towards the 17 minute mark. Roach is hiding. I like that. Just getting ready for the backstabs later when your opponent's a little bit out on the map. And re-droning for Solar, very good. Going to give him a bit more flexibility in this game. And he's got to rebuild some more hatcheries as well as this progresses. The players get so spread out here on Nightshade. A push forward coming. Vipers, Hydras are the key. And if you can abduct your opponent's Vipers into your Hydralisks and focus them down, that is just crushing. So whoever lands those could have a big win in this next engagement. Oh, two Lurkers dying immediately there to the plus three attack from Sola. And keep in mind that he has had plus three attack as a big advantage for his army. So not as bigger, it hits harder than Darks. One hatchery here taking a bit of damage from that single Lurker of Dark. He also has, I think, a few more. Might be Overlords to the top right of the oh. map. Sort of waiting. Oh, catching Overseers is nice. Of course, it makes the Lurkers have a bit more efficacy. Yeah. Oh, nice run by again. These Roaches. Dark. Oh, these run buys are keeping him in this game pick. And it's he waited that. for that. It's not just chaotic. It's not random. He waited, hidden in the shadows until he saw Solo was out of position. And then another big punishing move Ooh. jumps forward, grabs a whole ton of those lurkers. Solar's army keeps getting caught out here. And it really is just this weird situation where it's like Dark shouldn't be able to fight him, but he's constantly running up, punching Solar in the back of the head and running away before he can <laughs> even turn around. It's got to be so frustrating to be Solar in this game. That's how a lot of us won fights in primary school. It seems to be how Dark is going to be able to win this CVZ for game number three. Try and take the lead in this series. But of course, the game is not over yet. Both players could easily win this one. One bad engagement and it's all over. A uh, nice Roach little backstab here from Solar, making sure that fourth base can't be retaken. Finally clearing out that hatchery as well. Solar's still here on multiple bases. He's retaking a fourth, and a, he's got that fifth up on the north, but only 34 drones. The work account keeps getting diminished, and I really do think that big loss of Lurk has actually started to turn things around, because now Dark, his army is smaller. It's not quite as strong, but the gap is closing. And not wrong. Oh, there's Lurk is getting a few shots off there on Solar's army, which does regenerate slowly over time. Still has that plus three attack advantage though. Dark's never been able to afford it. He's going hand to mouth with all of his resources. Every single time he earns minerals and gas, it is going into remaking that army as neither player really is maxed out. Solar, of course, a lot closer in that regard. So he has about 20 more army supply. Actually about 16 more army supply at the moment. Those roaches still looking for an angle, just making sure that this hatchery doesn't get down without a fight. And continuing to scout to make sure that Dark has allocated resources to that defense. And it's going, oh! move from Dark, grabbing two Vipers there. That was really nice. That takes away a lot of the utility of Solar's army here. Solar can still hold position momentarily. He's going to push forward on the left. A very ballsy push forward. Uh, he just has to hold position there. I don't think he can go any deeper. And does pull back for now. He's got to be careful. Solar, I mean, he's got some nice momentum. If Dark's not in position, it could be huge. These lurkers look like blinding cloud, cloud bait to me, Pig. I mean, the Viper yeah. energy, I can't really see it. It's kind of off stream at the moment. There it is. Okay, so Ooh. two of those Vipers are full in energy. Okay, gonna go just for a few abducts for the, the short kills there. Not a bad move. And he's gonna get more energy out of those Evo Chambers. Nice corrosive vials taking out the Overseer. Solar back up on 50 workers behind this, trying to replenish those Vipers. He's got three out of fourth on the way. It's, it's so important. That gas is everything. You can see both players' gas banks so low. Darks almost empty the entire time here. Yeah, it's just... Uh... Using those resources as effectively as he can. A little oversaturated on that hatchery there, but it's so hard for Dark to actually find an expansion here, Pig. These drones are working as hard as they can, but where do you take your hatchery? Where is Solar not looking at the moment? I guess maybe the very, very top right, but that's so insanely hard to defend. Yeah, maybe maybe just down below, right kind of where Solar's army is hanging out right now. Could be the good position for Dark on the next base. Right now, this game has slowed down a little bit as both players tread water. Light harassment from both sides. And we do see just a bit of lost mining time there. Nothing too crazy. This single roach scouts into the main. We'll get cleaned up by that queen. More hydras now on the way. 
So, uh, oh, that Viper count. Can we see the units tab briefly? That would be uh, great. The Viper count is five versus four. Mm, That's pretty similar. The most important thing. That and the Lurker count, really. So eight, eight for uh, Dark, ten for Solar. Yeah, very Sick. similar. I mean, a couple more of Ducks like that, though. You can't replenish these Vipers, right? Dark has a lot more Hydras. How do you feel that the Hydras actually, you know, obviously they, they pick off what you what you grab with the Abducts of the Vipers, but does that feel like a little bit too many? Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, prefer more Roach is a cheaper unit you can use to run by. But uh, Hydras, they do a lot of damage. They definitely... Oh, big Abducts! Dark winning out on the Abduct War again! I think he may have lost one Viper. Looks like he took out three. And that's a huge win there for Dark. Solar has to be more careful. He's got to start sending changelings ahead. He's got to work the vision. He can't present his Vipers like that because Dark will take any gift you offer him. Absolutely. His Viper control has been more superior to Solar so far. Trying to get a couple unit pickoffs here as he Ooh. retreats to the south side. While in comes a lot of lurkers of Solar on the right. Oop. Got to get out of there. Almost wanted him to run on top of the Hydras yeah. and Baru a bit closer, but... Obviously a very risky maneuver. These two lurkers going to come in for the backstab. Roach is still posturing, ready to stab in themselves. Uh, I think for Solar here, he's got to realize he's losing these fights. And, and that means it's 10 times more important to replenish the Vipers right now. He's making more Hydra, oh. more lurkers. That's not what Solar needs to be spending his gas on. Uh, just because the Vipers haven't worked out for you, that's not a reason to stop going them. You are going to go for the objectively worst composition if you don't build more Vipers. And right now, it seems like Solar's just a bit busy with this harassment. I think he's lost track of his Viper count. This is this is looking a little bit nasty. Dark feels like he's playing so much like Rogue right now. Better spell late game control, and also just constant Lurker harassment as well. Such a Rogue play. And we do have just a couple of Lings and, some, uh, and a Lurker here catching at the Roaches of Solar, or more mainly being caught by the Roaches of Solar. Dark on that hatchery, it is very, very low. That's Ooh. an easy thing on there for Dark. Solar's army out of position in the middle of the map. It's all about the Viper control. Once again, only three Vipers have been replenished here for Solar. He's got to use them wisely. Losing the base, not the end of the world here. It's all about the armies. This is still a low economy game where the fight trumps everything else. One big battle will, be, will probably decide this game. If they end up in a pitched fight, Max versus Max, whoever wins that will take the game 100%. Absolutely right. Solar still with a supply lead, but just doesn't seem to find positive engagements. I like the Nidus Worm. Ooh. Dark does see it, so he pulls a lot of his forces back to deal with it, splits his forces off. I don't think there's anything in that Nidus Worm, to be honest. No. Well, okay, now there is a handful of Hydras. Handful of Hydras, not too much, though. Definitely something which creates a lot more threat. I think Solar's doing a lot of nice moves in terms of tech, but he's not executing quite at that same level with those Vipers. If he can get these forward, that'd be great. The Overseer goes forward. He's looking for it. He's looking for the Abducts. Is he going to go for it? And no, grabs a Lurker. The Vipers getting traded on both sides. Both sides lose a couple of Vipers, but I think once again, Dark, I believe, positive trade by a single Viper. Dark, very, very light on the gas here, Pig, which gets me a little bit worried if he does take a bad fight. He's got a lot of minerals in the bank, not a ton you can do with that, apart from making a lot of lings, which he is doing, by the way. Lings could go for run buys, maybe do a backstab, pick off a base, a bunch of drones, something like that. That's the best you can hope for. They're not really useful in these fights. And without gas, Dark's not going to be able to do things like replenish his lurker count, replenish his hydra count. He's making two more right now, but look at that, just 60 gas in the bank. And these roaches getting pushed back on the left-hand side at the same moment. These Lings actually could be a real spanner in the works here. Making their way down, though, they were spotted quite early. A few Roaches are in position. And the Roaches have pretty sick upgrades as well. 3-2 <laughs> Roaches yeah. against 0-2 Lings. Lurkers in range of some of the static defense here. Solar and come the Vipers to grab those joints. Grab the Vipers again. Dark picks up both of them. Oh, my Lord. How does he always land these spells first? He's just quick on that trick I made. He's... <laughs> It's actually insane. Solar's got to be frustrated by this. This is not the way it's meant to go. These trades are meant to be way more even. Two for ten? That's ridiculous. That's 1,600 gas. That's actually just a crazy difference in the gas lost. Ah. Uh. I mean, it's been great trades for Dark, but Sola is making some great moves here. He just will not let Dark get that gas income that he desperately needs. Lurk is still pushing forward. Looks like he's going to lose one of them to the piles. Ah, oh, just unburrows it in time. Yeah, adaptive talent is so important for allowing those lurkers to dodge. And uh, here we go, Solar moving around this map. This is not an easy composition to control, by the way. Another great Ling run by here from Dark. Going to take out that bottom left base, uh, take out quite a few workers as well. Solar, once again, just getting forced to react constantly to Dark's backstabs. And whilst he's doing a great job with it, it worries me because it adds pressure, it adds stress. 
You've already got Dark, one of the most cool and composed players under pressure against Sola, who is not quite as consistent in these high pressure moments. And oh man, one bad fight can turn things so quickly. We see the damage from that Lurker Splash. Those units getting caught on one of their own cocoons were unable to retreat there. And Solar, he's now, for the first time in a long time in this game, down in supply. Down in army, down in workers, and it looks like now down in bases as well. Dark is playing a godlike CBZ right now, Pig. If he does face off against Serral further down the line, I would be extremely excited to see it happen as it looks incredibly close in level here. He picks off that hatchery. This hatchery's died a bunch for Solar. The late game army control of Dark has been unmatched by Solar as he continues to get that big supply lead and hit towards Maxed. I just did not think that Dark would get towards Maxed here. He finally even has breathing room to start plus three attack, taking away the one advantage that Solar has had for the last 15 minutes. I mean, Dark is just better than him with these Vipers. And he's more active with the backstabs at the same time. It's got to be so incredibly frustrating at this point. Sola realizes this is not working out. He's got to make a big play right now. He's going to push towards the natural expansion. Blinded Clouds not actually being that effective. Oh. But the Abducts, very useful. Quick run back though. Three of those Lurkers do still survive. Sola looks like he will be able to clear out the main base there of Dark. Very quick moves there from Sola. And he needs to actually find a lot more critical damage than this. It's a great start to the counterattack. But Dark with a lot more more hatcheries and a little bit more money in the back now. Solar completely broke on zero minerals. And there we go. Overseers, Lurkers, Hydras moving forwards. They're going to rotate around to this side now. He's going to just go for it. Oh, oh my I don't God. know about this, He's man. He's a madman. He's a madman. Those Lurkers were out of range as well. Meanwhile, gets the pile there on one of Darks. He's juicing up those Vipers, getting ready for this battle with Solar not having any Vipers in the mix here on the front lines. Grabs another Lurker, picks it off. Another Hydra going to go down. Oh, grabs a Lurker there on the front line. Solar just runs out of steam and Dark with a beautiful late game CVC is going to take the map advantage here against Solar. That man is hard to stop. That man up there on that big screen is very hard to stop. I was watching Solo's camera in the moments, uh, final moments of that game. You could just see the frustration. He was just going, this is not working. What, What is going on? I've got the right units. I'm doing the right things, but he's just a little bit quicker. Every single time, Zerglings, Roaches find their way into my mineral line. Every single time, those Vipers, I mean, <laughs> the Viper Sniper, does Dark need a new the nickname? The Viper Sniper. <laughs> <laughs> it was like 13 to 3 Vipers. It should not be that one-sided. I don't know, man. The final boss seems like a pretty ball and middle <laughs> nickname for this kid. Can we give him a lame one, though? Can we yeah. replace a really, really <laughs> badass name with, like, a, a really the, lame one? The Viper Sniper. The Viper Sniper. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. His late-game control was just so much better than Solar's, and after a game like that, as Solar, you're going to be like, do I want another late game against Dark? Do I really... Do I want to do that again to myself? Or and do that, we get aggressive here on Simulacrum? That's demotivating because Dark's, you know, other than other than that that game two, of course, which was a timing attack from Solar, Dark's been the more aggressive player. He's been the one crashing the Lingbane Muta trying to finish it on Leartech. In that game, mass Roach Ravager constantly running in, swaps into Mutas, this really mid-game style, and it's all about the aggression, the momentum, sniping the fourth base and so on. You know, if you're playing the guy who's kind of more comfortable in that aggressive driver's seat, and then he just drags it back when he's way behind you in the late game tech and upgrades, that's a hard thing to get past. I can't wait to see if he is able to move forward. We are going to have a very quick break, and we'll resume this series in just a minute.
Welcome back, StarCraft fans. We are in the midst of one of the most exciting series we've had so far in the round of 12. And I would say the most exciting pig. I'm putting my vote in. I, I don't think anyone could vote against you uh, right now. I mean, after that last It's map. the only one that hasn't been a 3-0, so it's a pretty easy call, I feel. I think that last map alone beats, the, beats, beats uh, a lot of the series in many different tournaments. That was an awesome comeback from Dark. Uh, I tell you, man, there, there's a lot of moments where I could I, I could really empathize with how the players were feeling. I, I think what I was so impressed by was just the fact that Dark, he showed that championship quality that he's done it again, you know, identified the bad situations in and played around them. All right, let's launch here into map number four, looking to survive in this series. In the bottom right, in the red, representing Triumphant Song Gaming, he is solo. And it's up left here on match point from Dragon Phoenix Gaming. He is Dark. Yeah, I mean, Dark's ability to roll with the punches there was massive. I think the crucial moment in that last game was when Solar first pressed across with the Lurkers, the Vipers, the Roaches, the Ravagers, the Hydras, and uh, took out the fourth base and could have won the game right there. And Dark just... <laughs> Like a master, he, he flanked him with the Roach Ravager and he basically, they, they pulled out their red flags and they waved it and they said, come over here, Solar, look, we're, we're trying to pick off your reinforce. And uh, Solar took the bait. Dark, just like a master, he lured him all the way back to Solar's fourth base around the edge of the map and suddenly Dark had Lurkers out at home. We were talking Lurkers that were like six minutes later than Solar's in that game and somehow he survived. Uh, just masterful play from a terrible situation from the champ. Yeah, and he also had less Vipers, but got more done with them than double the Viper count of Solos. N absolutely nuts. I don't... <laughs> yeah. I don't envy any Zerg that has to face him in future games. I mean, that was, that was madness. There was like... Sometimes, I don't know if there was misclicks going on or Solo was panicking. There was definitely times where you could tell he was abducting Lurkers, and Dark would come in and punish him for it, and he'd, he'd kind of grab one Lurker and lose two Vipers for it. Definitely Viper, Vipers want to target the enemy Vipers as long as you've got enough anti-air there to, to capitalize on it. I mean, some cool moves from Soli. He was dropping blinding clouds to, to block the Hydras from shooting the Vipers, but it just wasn't enough. And at the end of that, Dark does bring it back. He's one game away from sealing the deal. It's Simulacrum. It's both a, uh, a kind of shortish map, but more importantly, just like that last one, spread out bases, really conducive, wide ramps, good for good for attacks. Big Roach Bane, Big Ling Bane attacks, mobility, going to be massive here. Yeah, and a very standard build for both players here. Not a huge investment into Ling's, standard third base timing. I love StarCraft 2, it's my favorite game in the whole world. It's the greatest game that's ever been installed on a PC hard drive in the history of PCs and hard drives. But... One of the funniest things in the world to me is Vipers abducting each other and then abducting their own <laughs> Vipers back. To such vipers. When it gets um, abduct spam, it's actually so funny. It always makes me chuckle and smile when I see it, even at professional tournaments like this. I think there was um, there was a clip from way back when from some big Zerg versus Zerg where both Vipers abducted each other at the exact same time and they just kind of swapped <laughs> yeah, positions. Yeah. And it was just this like, this weird, the funniest, weirdest looking thing I've ever seen. I remember watching from, I think it was in GSL, and I was just laughing. I was like, wow, that's that's the first time I've seen them cast at the exact same time and just trade places. Top kicks. We do have an early swell of lings here from Dark, similar to how Solo opened his game. He got about like eight or so lings just to sort of go out there in the map, cut the drone count a little bit and uh, have a bit of a poke, at least remain safe. Yeah, nice quick Evo chamber from Solo once again. Of course, Dark, uh, always slower to throw down that tech. Still neither player really opting for Big Ling Bane aggression, but this time Dark is going to be the first one to poke across with just about 10 or 12 Zerglings. Yeah, so not really a scary force at all for Solo, as they both have their Bane S at standard times for ZVZ. Big swell of Lings from Solar here. A lot of Lings, actually. Oh, that's good. Keep him safe, but also give him some nice counter-attack potential. I'd love to see him go straight across that map. Oh, plus one melee from Solar. Going to commit quite a bit to Lings here, Ooh, potentially. Ooh, I'd like to see a second gas and Muta tech behind that as well. That's uh, usually what it leads to, but... Uh, maybe, maybe not, like, this have, is such a, such a small map, right? Roach yeah. attacks are so scary. Like, I have seen some attack timings with just a huge swell of Ling Bane and just trying to end the game early. But there's that lair, so it looks more and more like Spire. All right, these Lings still not pushing across yet for Solar, despite building so many of them. And I mean, both players, there's like this weird meta where neither of them really wants to commit. 
uh, Twilling Bane. Pressure for, oh, eight Banelings. Oh, my lord. Okay, it's a huge commitment. Soul is going to need to make a lot more Banelings, and he needs to pull every queen to the front right now. This is a huge attack from Dark. Yeah, massive attack here on three hatcheries from Dark. Coming towards the third of Solar looks to be his target. Losing a few lings down here to the south, but the main engagement is up here to the north side. He's only just made two banelings. It's not enough. Oh, he's got the banelings here. Solar boxed against the wall in. Dark oh. going back on massive connection. Wow. Dark. Oh, oh, no. Solar did not realize those banelings were morphing in secret. Only made two extra banelings. And Dark there just smashes him out of that game in that series. Dark. He's just too damn good. A 3-1 victory there against Sola. Sola. Sola managing to get a map on the board there, of course, off the back of an all-in, a bamboozle, road Ravager timing with Lings. But Dark, when he just got to get his game plan kicking in, when the Dark engine started to be in full cylinder,